Hey friends, tonight we are hanging out at the Magic Kingdom. A lot of things have changed since the last time I was here, including the fact that you can now drink a margarita in the Magic Kingdom. How crazy is that? And also I hear that they're changing up the Lightning Lane selection process for Genie Plus, and I figured I'd come on out, talk about the changes, ride some rides, eat some food, and have a beautiful Magic Kingdom kind of day. Anywho's, let's go do this. And here we are, we have made it. It is such a beautiful day out today. A beautiful December day. The temperature's in the 80s and there's a little bit of wind and it's just amazing. It's the perfect time of the year to come to Magic Kingdom. Like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, you can now get a margarita in the Magic Kingdom. For the longest time, you were allowed to have beer and wine at any of the sit-down restaurants. And recently, they added specialty cocktails in there. So you can get everything from Bloody Marys to Old Fashions to margaritas. And I want to test it out. I want to try a margarita in Magic Kingdom. So we got a reservation at Skipper's Canteen. And I'm excited to actually eat in there and have a little fancy drink too. I'm also excited to ride some rides today so I bought the Genie Plus and it cost me $15 and just a couple of weeks ago I think I bought it and it was $20 so 15 is a little bit better. Let me know what you guys think about the fact that you can now drink in the Magic Kingdom. I mean, beer and wine has been here for a while, but now we're talking about the hard liquor, you know, tequila and bourbon and stuff like that. I know that a lot of people will say Walt didn't want it, but I mean, Walt kind of did want it. He always had little special clubs and areas for him and his friends to drink in Disneyland, and they're kind of keeping it inside the restaurants, which is a good idea, but I feel like it's an untapped thing that it's like a revenue source that they could have been using. I mean, I'd rather them allow alcohol in Magic Kingdom than have to pay for Lightning Lanes. I mean, I feel like, I mean, what do you guys think? Would you, would you allow alcohol to be just served all around Magic Kingdom if you didn't have to pay for a Lightning Lane? And speaking of Lightning Lane, like I said, I paid to actually get the Genie Plus today and I booked a Big Thunder Mountain one and it's not available till 420. So when the new update comes into play, there's gonna be an option for me to modify this without losing it. And that's like one of the biggest gripes with this whole system. You know what I mean? Everyone misses the fact where you get to go in and refresh and try to get the you know attraction that you wanted or the time slot that you wanted and they're gonna fix that. So it's gonna make things a little bit easier. Honestly, I kind of enjoy the fact that you can't walk around Magic Kingdom with alcohol and I'm just saying I feel like they should add more designated areas so that people can stay in there and they can't bring the drinks out and if that's an additional revenue source that we can get like fast pass back or more, you know, cast members and stuff like that, then I think it's worth exploring. I mean, I, I would be all for it. You guys let me know what you think. I just kind of like hearing all of your thoughts and opinions and now I think I'm gonna make my way over to Big Thunder Mountain to ride the wildest ride in the wilderness. Another thing they announced is the fact Splash Mountain has a closing date of January 23rd and it's kind of funny because my mom was just down here recently and she rode Splash Mountain for the very first time and the last time. So her first time was the last time and she liked it. She, she thought it was a fun ride, but uh, she said it is like kind of run down a little bit. She's like, These, uh, it looks definitely look like it shows its age. And I told her, I said, well, it's getting turned into uh, Tiana's Bayou Adventure. So I'm excited for her to come back and ride that and have a comparison. You know what I mean? I think it'll be really fun and I'm kind of excited too. But here we are, Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. I love how a lot of people have pointed out that I say mountain kind of incorrectly. Like mountain, but I say a mountain without the T. And like everyone from my town all says it the same way. Like everybody all says mountain because where I grew up, I lived on Sport Mountain. And uh, it just kind of blows my mind. I never thought I was saying it wrong. We also say Scranton instead of Scranton. Scranton, isn't that? I, I've never realized it, and it, it just it, it's it's kind of it's been blowing my mind for the past couple of months. Here we go, front row. I do like the back row, probably my favorite spot, but I love seeing the the front of the train here. Oh, 
Then with your hands, arms, feet, and legs inside the train, and be sure to watch your kids. If any of you folks are wearing hats or glasses, because this here is the wildest ride in the wilderness. <laughs> Oh boy! <laughs> ah! <laughs> oh! Ah! <laughs> We made it. Big Thunder is definitely one of my favorite rides at the Magic Kingdom. In fact, if I probably didn't get another ride with my Genie Plus today, uh, I would still feel satisfied the fact that I just got to ride that without waiting because I think it's a 60 minute wait. And like usually it does have a long wait time and the queue can get super hot and sticky. Like I feel like it gets so hot when you're down in that corridor there. So the least amount of time waiting in that and sweating it out is definitely worth it. Now it's time we actually make our way in for our reservation, and I'm gonna show you guys the menu a little bit. I love coming to Skipper Canteen. It's such a fun uh, restaurant, the world famous Jungle Cuisine. In case you weren't aware, this is a Jungle Cruise themed restaurant. So basically a skipper is actually gonna be your waiter, and it's so fun. Like, it's an adventure and uh, dining experience at the same time, and they'll tell funny jokes the food is phenomenal some people say this is actually the best restaurant in Magic Kingdom and uh, now we get to add margarita to the, the mix of things here is a look at the menu and just like I mentioned before here are the specialty cocktails they have a jungle bird that comes with some rum some cane sugar pineapple juice then they have the golden haze margarita tequila Grand Marday, agave syrup, lime juice, and smoked chili bitters. That actually sounds really good. I'm excited to try that. A tropical sangria, and a couple of other things like the house-made skipper sangria. And here's a look at the food items. They've got uh, taste like chicken because it's chicken, har har char su pork, and some lamb chops. The baba baba lamb chops. And I love how the menu is all Jungle Cruise themed too. It's very pretty. Looks like our table is ready, so we're gonna head in, and I'm gonna show you guys a little bit of the inside of the restaurant, because it's very well themed in there, and there's three different dining areas, and I always ask to sit in the library. This main area here is the mess hall, but like I said, I like to sit back into the uh, library area, and they also have a jungle room, too. They're all really nice and really well themed. Here is the library room, and our table's right here, and look at the chairs. Everything like is so fancy. We're gonna sit on this bench over here, all the artwork, and then look at that painting right there. Isn't that cool? It's really pretty in here. One of my favorite tables in the library section is this little butterfly table right here. I think this is so cool, but I'm just by myself, so I wanna take a big seat like this, but it's such a little fancy little booth. And then also, look at this right here. If you guys know what that is or what that stands for, uh, let me know in the comments, but it's really awesome. I'm definitely going with the margarita, and also, I'm gonna get the, uh, it tastes like chicken because it is chicken. I've had every single entree on this menu, and the chicken is one of my favorites, but I'm also gonna get an appetizer that I've never had before. I've never had it before. 
These are called the Cachapas, and it's house-made corn pancakes with beer braised pork, roast corn, avocado cream, and salsa. And here they are. Look at this. They look so good, actually. I'm very excited to dive into these. I've never had it. And then here it is. There's my golden haze margarita. Ooh, fancy. Comes with a little orange on there, some salt on the rim, and I can't wait to taste this. I mean, because it does have the Grand Marnay in there, so it's going to be like an orangey margarita. First things first, we got to taste this margarita. It's pretty crazy to say that I'm drinking a margarita in Magic Kingdom. Like, it's happening right now. It's good. Oh, yeah. This is actually a fantastic margarita. Really nicely blended, not overpowering on the tequila or the Grand Marnay. And I like it a lot. Like, it's, it's really, it's actually, the best way to describe it is a refreshing margarita. A refreshing margarita. Enough of the margarita business. I'll be slowly sipping on that. Now I want to dive into our uh, appetizer before the chicken comes. And I remember they used to have arepas on the menu here, but they got rid of them. And this is what replaced them. And uh, something new. Something new that I have never had before. Whenever any food is served, like on little tiny things like this, I just think you have to pick it up and like eat it. But I think I'm going to cut it, you know? I don't want to make a mess with all the salsa and stuff like that. The pork looks really good though, and then the avocado cream right there. Here we go. That's solid. Very good. Amazing flavor. I love it so much. Holy moly. You grab a little more. You know it's good when you go in for a second bite. It's so funny because my skipper came over and said, this is the corniest thing on the menu other than his jokes. And it kind of just made me giggle out loud. I like the little puns, you know? Now it's time for the main event. And I have to say, I am very comfortable in here. Like my seat, like it's just so nice and it has so many nice carvings in it. I just feel fancy, like king of the castle, king of the cancy. Look at this, I have a chair, I have a chair. And here it is. And I love this chicken, it's so good. The breading is so airy and delicious. The rice and the sauce. It's honestly one of the best dishes on the whole menu. I always get it. It's my, this is what I go to when I'm just like in the mood for some good food right here. Don't want to try anything different. And uh, yeah, it's a, it's a solid, solid choice. It's also the cheapest thing on the menu, coming in at, I believe, $28? $28, which, I mean, Disney prices, that's kind of affordable. <laughs> I mean, uh, any sit-down restaurants, I'm sure you won't find anything under $20 for any adult entree. But let's cut right down in here. Look at that. Nice crispy breading, just the way we love it. Gotta get some of that sauce and some of that rice and a perfect bite will happen. Cheers to chicken. I should probably ask what kind of breading they use on that. It just has this unique texture to it and it's like air fry, like it, it just, it, it is really incredible. It's the thing that stands out most on this dish is the breading for me. I just love it and I've never had a chicken with the same exact texture or feel to it. I just asked and they told me it was cornstarch and it's a completely gluten-free menu item. So I guess the more you know. Another awesome thing about this margarita, it's actually made with the Rocks tequila, Dwayne Johnson's, his own personal tequila, and that's what they use inside the drink, who he was actually in the Jungle Cruise movie. That was a nice little meal. I enjoyed it very much. And I love the chicken. The uh, pork was really, really good, but it's really awesome to be able to say I had a margarita in Magic Kingdom. Like that's something I didn't think would ever be possible and that's what we did today. Now I think we're gonna move along, go ride another ride. We only have a little bit left in the park. Tonight is a Christmas party. So I think it officially closes at six or seven o'clock and uh, the sun's going down real fast. We're going to start making our way over to Tomorrowland, but I just wanted to stop and give a little castle appreciation because look at how beautiful it is right now. The sun is starting to set and it's getting that golden hour and it adds that color to the castle and that you only get to see it like this, this, this time of the day and it's beautiful. 
walking through Magic Kingdom right now is so beautiful. The sunset, the music, and most of the crowds have all gone away because the park is closing and it's switching over to a Christmas party and I love it. I really wish I was staying for the Christmas party. Tonight would be the perfect night. I did go twice this year though, so I'm very lucky that I'm able to do that. But the first night that I went to the Christmas party, it got rained out. Like it was so bad. The second night was very much success. Something else I wanted to tell you guys about. Uh, I'm actually doing another whatnot auction with a lot of cool Disney memorabilia and props. And one of the things I'm going to be auctioning off is very rare. Actually, after this, after we leave Magic Kingdom, I'm going to take you guys back to my house and I'm going to show you some of the items I'm going to be auctioning off that you guys can buy. And I'm starting the auction off on all the items at like a dollar. And it's uh, benefiting Give Kids of World Village. But one of the items is a super rare. Uh, extinct attraction here at the Magic Kingdom like it's a piece from it and it is so cool but I can't wait I'll show you guys later on right over there used to be Stitch's Great Escape which was an attraction here at Magic Kingdom and then they closed it down but prior to that it was Alien Encounter and I happen to have a very cool piece of history from that attraction that I'm going to be auctioning off and I'll show you guys it later on in the video but it's definitely something pretty iconic I was able to get another attraction with my Genie Plus and I decided to do the Barnstormer. I want to see if I can see Tron light cycle running or even the railroad because that's been out and about in the parks recently and uh, yeah, might get lucky. I mean the Barnstormer is a perfect uh, ride to actually catch any of those things from happening. So that's why we're going to be making our way straight back to Storybook Circus and then maybe afterwards get a little dessert. Something to snack on since we didn't get anything at uh, Skipper's Canteen. I might be more excited for the railroad to be back than to ride Tron. I mean, I mean, kind of, but I am super excited for Tron, but I do miss the railroad. It's one of the most relaxing rides in the park. Oh, look at that. Here it comes. I cannot wait to ride it, though. That looks so fun. You can also see the little tunnel here. That's where the train's going to be going under. And it's going to be cool because I bet you there's going to be a bunch of nice lights too that's going to add to the train. So the train's going to be kind of a newer attraction as well. It's funny because I'm actually wearing my Tron Light Cycle uh, Magic Band right now. Look at that. Kind of cool. And we just saw it going off. Oh, and here it comes. Our little plane. It's time to ride the best roller coaster until Tron actually opens up. And look, the propellers are actually going to spin. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Look at this beautiful view going to be once we get up here. cannon it's actually lit look at that I love the little details and I love that the, the uh, things are still spinning that was such a beautiful ride on the barnstormer the lights the sunset I love it it's a fun ride too like honestly just not being a kid roller coaster I, I like it I actually like it a lot it's one of the um, go-to rides for me here in the park we're gonna have to start making our way out. The park is officially closed and only people staying for the Christmas party are allowed to stay. But look at that castle shot now with the sunset happening there and they got the little projection and up lighting happening. Very, very fancy. 
I haven't decided on what I should do for Christmas. I mean, I've always come to Magic. I think it's been like maybe four years now, four years in a row, I spent Christmas Day here at Magic Kingdom uh, because I couldn't get home to see my mom or anything like that. And I might be able to do it this year. I might be able to make a short trip up. So I'm thinking maybe I might do that. Go home just for two days, see mom, Bonnie, and uh, enjoy the holidays up there with some snow. But I don't know yet. It's gonna be a tough decision, but I'll have to decide soon. Now it's time to make our way out of the park down a nice Christmas lit Main Street USA, home to see Gracie Grill, and also I want to show you guys all those cool props and memorabilia, but I had a great day today. Look at it, it's so festive here. I really do love the holiday season at Magic Kingdom and Hollywood Studios and Epcot. I haven't been to Animal Kingdom yet. I went there with my mom and sister, but I have to come back and make a video there. But all the holidays, just at Disney. <laughs> On my way out, I ran into some friends with a familiar face on his shirt. Look at that. Look at very fancy. Yeah. Oh, wait, there's something on the back. Very fancy. Oh, wow. I love it. Thank you guys so much. That is such, that, honestly, amazing. Thank you so much. Did you see that? He drew my face on his shirt. That was really cool. <laughs> what a way. What a way to end up leaving Magic Kingdom. And holy moly, I think we're going to be taking the ferry. Look at this line for the monorail. It goes all the way back to the actual ferry, I feel like. Yep, ferry boat it is. And now we are back home and I'm going to show you guys some of the cool things I'm going to be auctioning off on whatnot. Now these items are pretty pretty cool like i said i really some of them are going to be hard for me to part with but uh it's for give kids the world village we're raising money for them we've already done i think this will be the third auction and uh we're just about thirty thousand dollars donated so far to the village itself and that is incredible you know what i mean and it's a good way for people to get these really rare like disney memorabilia items and also donate to charity at the same exact time and I'm excited so the auction is gonna be Monday uh, at 7 p.m. and I'll put all the information in the description so you guys can check it out or you can just search paging Mr. Morrow and bookmark my show and follow me because you get $10 off if you uh, use my referral link so you should definitely do that if you plan on coming to the auction and it's live like it's literally me sitting here in my house live streaming auctioning off items with friends and just talking and having a good time. It's really fun, but let me show you the items that you can actually win. And some of the items we're gonna be giving away too, which is even cooler. We'll start off with some of the smaller items. Now I have a lot more than just these items here, uh, but these are just some of the things that I really do love, including these license plates. These are original license plates. So this is from MGM Studios and it still has like the sticker on it. Look at $3 this was. $3. And then, of course, Mickey's Toontown in Disneyland, which is no more. A rock and roller coaster. And a couple of cast member name tags. These always sell good. We got Matt, Robert, Beth, Jennifer. And then a Pirates of the Caribbean character stat sketch from Mark Davis. This was 1965 Disneyland. And also I have all the exclusive Roosevelt shirts from the LA Comic Con, along with all these other exclusives I'm gonna be auctioning off or giving away. But here it is. Here's some of the good stuff. Right here is a Walt Disney World Imagineering shirt. And this is really cool because it's from an attraction. And on the back, we'll flip it over. Look at this. It's from Remy's Ratatouille Adventure project team we're going to be auctioning that off along with a disneyland pea coat one of the actual coats that they wear like when they're outside and it's chilly out and this is so cool this is very priceless and then underneath it look at this alien encounter team member this jacket is so cool i love it so much obviously the attraction is no more and then you look on the back and uh, it says Tomorrowland 1995. This is really cool. I think this is a 2X, yeah. This is a medium, but I got another pea coat too. And this one is from Disney's MGM Studios. 
these are so awesome and hard to come by too because you, Disney usually doesn't part ways with this. This even has a sticker too. Look at that. I love this. And this one is a medium as well, I think, or a large. I don't know. But I'll put all the information. I'll have some more background on it. And uh, yeah, some really cool stuff. Here is something that I have recently acquired that I'm going to be adding to my personal collection. And I'm sorry, I'm not going to be auctioning this off because I love it too much. But to you guys, it just looks like a, like old like dog. But this, believe it or not, was an original dog or original puppy. Or should I say an original Dalmatian puppy that they used in the 101 Dalmatians movie. The original one with Glenn Close. They didn't actually have 101 Dalmatian puppies. They used uh, little props like this to fill in the gaps. And this is one of those puppies. And I'm so excited that I have it. This is going to be a beautiful piece that I'm going to be cherishing forever. And it's actually going to go through a little... Uh, touch up it's gonna get fixed up and a lot of the spots are missing uh, but I'm gonna see about actually duplicating Gracie spots onto this little pup right here and I am so excited I will I'll keep you guys posted on uh, the transformation and this is like I said I am so pumped to actually own this to own a piece to actually own one of the 101 Dalmatian pieces from the movie is it's such an honor for me it's gonna go well with all of my other memorabilia and I just can't wait my Gracie, where are you? <laughs> what are you doing, huh? What are you doing? What are you doing, baby? Just so you guys are aware, Gracie has been sitting inside of her doom buggy. She has. I have it set up right here. Looks like she grabbed one of my socks and put it in there. But, uh... Uh, every time I give her attention, she gets out of the bed. So I try to like run and grab my camera to catch it in action and then she disappears. What are you doing? But I'm trying to get her to go back in there. You want this? I threw it over there. I threw it over here. Yeah, it's right on there. Come on. Come on. Come on. Right here. Not up there. Not up there. <laughs> it's not up there. It's over here, little one. Look at you. Yes, look at that face. Look at that little facey. Look at that little facey. Ooh, what? 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 Aw. Let me see. Whew. And with that, I think we are done here today. I'm glad that we had a fun day at Magic Kingdom. I got to show you some of the cool items. Had a margarita. Like, that's craziness. And uh, overall, just enjoyed making the video. So, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I enjoyed making the video. And we'll see you next time. Bye.